The man, Andy, finally encountered other survivors. He greeted them, but instead of a response, they warily revealed their weapons. In this zombie-infested apocalypse, the few remaining humans were distrustful of each other due to the scarcity of food. Andy and his family, desperate to survive, had been drifting at sea for two and a half months. While staying on the boat was relatively safe, the scarcity of food was a major concern. One day, Andy spotted an abandoned yacht. Determined to check for supplies, he rowed over in a small boat. Carefully using a mirror to inspect for any signs of danger, Andy ventured into the yacht. Luck seemed to be on his side as he discovered a significant stash of food that could last them for months. Overjoyed, he loaded up a box with the newfound supplies and returned to his boat. Little did he know that his carelessness had put his wife, Kay, in grave danger. Unaware of the potential threat, Andy was happily returning with the food. Meanwhile, Kay, learning that her husband had found the supplies on an overturned yacht, decided to secretly visit the yacht to get him a razor. However, as she entered a room, she heard a noise. Sensing danger, Kay hurriedly turned to leave, but it was too late. After an unknown amount of time, Andy was awakened by the cries of his daughter. Holding her, he noticed a pool of blood on the floor, a chilling premonition creeping over him. Opening the bathroom, he found his bitten wife, Kay, attempting to bandage her wound. Andy, still bewildered, only grasped the gravity of the situation when Kay presented a countdown wristband, 48 hours until she would turn into a zombie. Undeterred, Andy swiftly began packing, aware of a government-established aid station on land, possibly with a cure for the virus. Time was of the essence, and the family set out immediately. However, the land posed more dangers than the safety of their boat. They needed to stay vigilant. Luckily, they stumbled upon a car. As Andy refueled, Kay spotted an approaching zombie. Afraid of alerting it, she signaled with the turn signal. Andy, understanding, hurried back to the car before the zombie reached them. Shortly after driving away, Kay noticed her wound oozing with zombie fluids, a sign of imminent transformation. Fearing for her family, Kay decided to leave the car. Seeing her distressed state, Andy stopped and caught up with her. Aware of her impending fate and the lack of a cure, Kay attempted to leave. Despite her resolve, Andy refused to give up. He assisted her back into the car, intentionally damaging the door handle to prevent her from leaving. With a broken but determined family, they continued their journey to the aid station. Shortly after driving away, another unexpected event occurred. A zombie suddenly appeared in the middle of the road, causing Andy to instinctively swerve, resulting in a crash. Kay was impaled by a tree branch through her abdomen, and Andy, knocked unconscious by the impact, awoke to find a word written on the car door. Beside him, his wife's face was covered in zombie fluids. Before long, she mutated. Andy, intending to comfort his terrified daughter, was accidentally bitten by his now fully transformed wife. After securing his daughter in the car, Andy walked back, compelled to fulfill the final journey for his wife. Overwhelmed by despair, he sat on the ground, releasing a roar of anger and reluctance. Ah! The thought of joining his wife crossed his mind, but for the sake of his months-old daughter, he couldn't give up just yet. Andy decisively took the wristband from his wife's hand, placed it on his own wrist, set the countdown for 48 hours, and embarked on a journey with his daughter. Before her transformation, he needed to entrust his daughter to someone trustworthy. Along the way, his daughter's incessant crying prompted him to use his wife's perfume, calming her with the familiar scent. However, Andy then spotted the culprit responsible for their car accident. Ready to confront the zombie with a tree branch, he was interrupted by a girl who appeared suddenly. The girl cut her palm with a sharp stone, attracting the zombie with the scent of blood. It became evident that this particular zombie was someone very dear to the girl. In her own way, she found a means to keep her loved ones close. Later, Andy continued toward the rescue station according to the map and finally arrived in the dark. However, it wasn't what he expected. The place was pitch black and didn't seem inhabited. As he searched around, he suddenly noticed a woman sitting in a corner. The woman, seeing the wound on Andy's arm, provided some basic first aid. She informed him that the place was no longer a rescue station due to the rapid spread of the virus, the government had already cancelled it. Andy initially thought of entrusting his daughter to the woman. However, he unintentionally saw her removing her wig, indicating she was taking medication, likely for an incurable illness. Andy had to abandon this idea. Early the next morning, he bid farewell to the woman and continued his journey with his daughter. Along the way, he observed many zombies. 
to avoid them, he buried his head in the soil, causing zombies to wake up whenever someone passed by. Soon, Andy spotted a truck and, unexpectedly, the owner was nearby. It turned out to be a zombie, but shooting it would attract more. Vic, unfortunately trapped in a pit, asked for Andy's help. Before he could process it, zombies appeared nearby. After getting Vic's truck keys, Andy quickly got in and rescued Vic just in time. Before the horde arrived, they drove away. Vic then took Andy to a gas station where he and his wife lived. Despite their seemingly good relationship, things weren't as they appeared. Vic, returning with a necklace he found, gave it to his wife, but she, in a moment of disdain, tossed it aside. Andy, bewildered, initially thinking of resting, was instead taken by Vic for a walk reluctantly, he left his daughter with Lorraine. To Andy's surprise, Vic's intention was to teach him shooting skills. Near a cage, numerous zombies were gathering, seemingly attracted by something. Without much thought, Andy, led by Vic, quickly dealt with all the zombies. However, upon closer inspection, Andy discovered a girl locked in the cage, the same girl he had encountered before. Andy had initially considered entrusting his daughter to this couple. However, using someone's life for a game wasn't something a good person would do. Meanwhile, Lorraine, while taking care of Andy's daughter, noticed signs of infection. Understanding the situation, she chose not to expose it. Instead, she cleaned and dried the infected clothes. When Andy returned and witnessed this, he realized that Lorraine already knew about the infection. Comparing her to Vic, she seemed like a better person, someone he might trust with his daughter. By evening, Andy finally made a decision, knowing that his time was running out. Tearfully saying goodbye to his daughter, Andy went outside alone, holding a government-issued injection syringe, prepared to end his life. At this critical moment, Lorraine appeared with his daughter. She understood Andy's purpose and that he was infected. However, when Andy pleaded with Lorraine to help him, she revealed the truth, she and Vic were not a couple. Her real husband had been killed by Vic. If Andy truly cared about his daughter, he should take her and leave. Hearing this, coupled with Vic's actions during the day, Andy became even more certain of Vic's true nature. It seemed like suicide would have to wait for now. Suddenly, Andy thought of the family he had encountered by the river at the beginning, they had two daughters. Perhaps they could help him. So, he decided to try his luck and take the two girls there. But as soon as he spoke, Vic, who had appeared out of nowhere, struck Andy on the head. When he woke up, he found himself and the girl locked together. In a short while, he would turn into a zombie. Andy had to find a way out. At that moment, zombies were closing in, attracted by the sausages hanging on the cage. Andy devised a plan, tied the sausages with a rope, and tossed them to the side. The zombies were lured away, and taking advantage of the distraction, Andy managed to lift the iron gate. Using this method, both of them successfully escaped. They hurried to the gas station and quietly slipped into the room, waking up the sleeping Lorraine. After picking up the daughter, they prepared to leave. Unaware of their escape, the soundly sleeping Vic remained undisturbed. However, unless the unexpected happened, it was bound to occur. Just as they were about to get into the car, Vic, carrying a shotgun, rushed out of the room. Lorraine intended to stop Vic from firing, but as soon as she poked her head out, Vic shot her. Seeing Vic about to descend from above, Andy had no choice but to run. They ran all the way to a cave, narrowly escaping pursuit. A furious Vic shouted outside, and they dared not make a sound. Fortunately, not long after, Vic left. They could only wait until dawn to leave. However, late at night, the girl was awakened by a strange noise. When she shone her flashlight, she saw Andy licking the bloodstains on the stone wall. Clearly, he was gradually becoming bloodthirsty. After daybreak, Andy, now back to normal, continued the journey with his daughter and the girl. However, as they walked under a tree, the girl stopped. It turned out that the zombie they encountered earlier was her father, who had been killed by the tribe and buried under that tree. After the girl completed a prayer for her father, the trio continued on their way. But not long after, Andy began to feel unwell. It turned out that he had only nine hours left before complete transformation. After a painful struggle, Andy fell into a coma on the ground. Thankfully, the girl picked up his daughter, and after he regained consciousness, they set off again towards their destination. However, when they finally found the family, they discovered the man was digging a grave for his family. Upon approaching, they realized he had also been bitten by a zombie. Andy, who had hoped to entrust his daughter to them, 
was met with an unexpected turn of events. The man advised Andy to leave this world with his daughter and offered him two bullets. Without hesitation, Andy turned away. Shortly after walking away, he heard the piercing sound of gunfire. The man first shot his wife and daughter before taking his own life. Andy picked up the man's gun, sat there dumbfounded. Was it really the end? However, the voice of his daughter calling Daddy made him reconsider. The girl brought the daughter to Andy and told him that her tribe was nearby, asking if he would like to join them. This renewed Andy's hope. It seemed like the best choice to send his daughter to their tribe for care. So, he agreed, and the two of them set off once again. However, while passing through a tunnel, they encountered a group of zombies leaning against the walls. The girl explained that these zombies were sleeping, they liked dark places, just like the buried ones in the ground. As long as they didn't disturb them, everything would be fine. But as they were about to reach the exit, they unexpectedly saw Vic. It seemed that Vic had noticed something and was slowly approaching. To attract his attention, Andy settled the girl and his daughter, then went to the back of the truck and shouted Vic's name loudly. He quickly hit among the zombies. However, Vic, in his quest to find Andy, started indiscriminately killing zombies. Andy, prepared for a counterattack, shot at Vic when he was next. But unfortunately, he didn't hit a vital spot. Weakened, Andy was knocked down by Vic. At that moment, Vic discovered the two children in the car. Without hesitation, he violently attacked the girl and then picked up Andy's daughter. Andy, dragging his exhausted body, stood up again. When Vic approached, he realized that Vic hadn't harmed the daughter. Due to the gunshot wound, Vic was severely injured. In his final moments, he chose kindness. Luckily, the girl was okay, but due to a head injury, she was a bit disoriented. Andy, gradually losing consciousness, struggled to maintain his composure. After walking a short distance, he couldn't hold on any longer and placed his daughter on the ground. After a few steps, Andy collapsed. As he got up, his face was covered in zombie fluid. Desperately trying to stay awake, he wiped his face with his hands. Seeing nearby rotting flesh, he couldn't resist his own hunger. Watching his daughter, Andy thought of a solution. He smeared some rotting flesh on himself and, with the girl's support, continued to move forward. When he couldn't hold on any longer, Andy immediately stopped. He tied the rotting flesh to a branch, told the girl that it was their last goodbye. Look after her for me, will you do that for me, Mitter? I will. Oh, I, I promise. Thank you. And then lifted his daughter onto his back. To prevent himself from harming them, Andy put a mouth guard in his mouth and securely bound his hands. After completing these actions, Andy fully turned into a zombie, but he didn't stop moving. The tribe members, who were killing zombies ahead, were preparing to leave. Suddenly, they heard the crying of a baby behind them. Turning around, they witnessed a shocking scene. As the mist in front of them slowly dispersed, a strange figure emerged, a zombie carrying his daughter and their tribe members. Guided by the rotting flesh, they continued to move forward under the weight. As a father, Andy fulfilled his final mission. After saving the two children, they bid Andy farewell. In the movie's final scenes, Andy's daughter was brought back to the tribe. Obviously, the tribe members also cared deeply for the child. One of them unintentionally discovered a thank you word on the child's abdomen. This was the last expression of love Andy left for his daughter and a gesture of gratitude to the tribe members who adopted her.